Hello and welcome to Clean Fiction Audio, where you can find wonderful reads for the quirky and discerning book lover. This audio version of the popular magazine focuses on the best reads that are available in audiobook form from both the Christian and clean secular markets. For even more independent and small press books, visit cleanfictionmagazine.com and check out our most recent edition. This week we are focusing on the fantasy genre, and you will enjoy four reviews from our Clean Fiction reviewers. Contact information for reviewers featured in this episode can be found in the description. We hope that you enjoy these reviews and find your next favorite audiobook. A Clean Fiction Review by Amy Lynn McConaughey of the Ravenwood Saga by Morgan L. Buss Lady Celine is the heir to the Great House of Ravenwood and the secret family gift of dreamwalking. As a dreamwalker, she can enter a person's dreams and manipulate their greatest fears or desires. For the last hundred years, the Ravenwood women have used their gift of dreaming for hire to gather information or to assassinate. As she discovers her family's dark secret, Celine is torn between upholding her family's legacy, a legacy that supports her people, or seeking the true reason behind her family's gift. Her dilemma comes to a head when she is tasked with assassinating the one man who can bring peace to the nations, but who will also bring about the downfall of her own house. One path holds glory and power and will solidify her position as Lady of Ravenwood. The other path holds shame and execution. Which will she choose? And is she willing to pay the price for the path chosen? The Ravenwood saga is part of the Christian fantasy and religious fantasy genres. This book is available on Amazon as an ebook and paperback on Barnes and Noble, Audible, ChristianBook.com, and Koba. I had read a few of Morgan's books in the past and had found them to be a little outside of my comfort zone. Because of this, it took me a while to finally pick up the three books that make up the Ravenwood saga. I had heard all sorts of good things about the books, and I already knew that Morgan herself was a passionate Christian woman. Honestly, I saw her books everywhere. So I finally bit the bullet and purchased the books. Despite my misgivings, I was completely blown away by how well-written and densely packed with spiritual truth these stories were. Action. From medieval sword fighting to assassins to all-out war, this series will give you it all. On top of all of the real-world fighting and action, Bussy adds the element of gifts that somewhat mirror the powers of Avatar the Last Airbender, found within the seven great houses of the land. The gifts would be a type of magic for those of you who are uncomfortable with that, but the way that Bosse uses this element is unique and a very powerful allegory for our walk with the Lord. Adventure The story mainly focuses on the seven great houses and their interactions. Within the series, you will travel to every corner of this land enjoying the sights and sounds of ethnic diversity. Each great house is unique in architecture, dress, and culture. Experiencing each during the travels of the main characters was both colorful and lovely to behold. These books do not in any way lack in the adventure category. Romance. The love story that these books tell is heartbreakingly beautiful. Both parties are raw and honest with both their fears and misgivings as well as their joys and triumphs. There is no perfect couple in this story. Busse was able to weave all of the questions we have about our own humanity into the relationship between the main romantic couple. The effect brought me to tears on more than one occasion. I will warn those who are sensitive that there is a generous helping of kissing, but the content fades to black before getting too steamy. Religion Morgan L. Busse has put the phrase, In darkness there is light, as a main feature on her website. I would say that in this series, that phrase is the main theme. She shows the darkness in all its ugliness, so be prepared to witness the damage it can do. To redeem this, she shows the light, the name for our Lord within the books, in all his glory, mercy, and grace. Somehow, she was able to place every facet of a faith journey from the deepest pit to the highest heights within a three-book series. I am very impressed. Each page was another emotional journey into things we all struggle with. The use of faith was less in your face and more of a quiet nudge along the path to the light. There are not sufficient words for how inspiring I truly found it. Final thoughts. 
I could not recommend the Ravenwood saga more highly. Each character, no matter how small their role, was given their own complexity and journey lending a realness to the story that I have not experienced often. The author's attention to even the tiniest detail allowed the story to flow almost effortlessly from beginning to end. Using real-world faith as an anchor, she managed to portray every shuddering step on the difficult road toward the light, with lessons that we all can relate to. Boosie did not leave any opportunities untouched when it came to speaking about her faith. In these pages, you will definitely see in darkness there is light. This book is rated AB. This is the full blush, people. If you are prone to fainting, you will need a fan. For more specific information about this rating, visit the Levels of Clean page on our website. Other books in this series include Flight of the Raven and Cry of the Raven. You can find the author, Morgan L. Bus at morganlbus.com. A Clean Fiction Review by Amy Lynn McConaughey of The Luck Child by Rebecca Schaefer. Cabernet would give almost anything to be remembered, except his freedom. Cursed to be eternally forgotten, Cabernet grew up walking a dangerous, lonely line between the world of mankind and the world of fairy. Now known only by a faceless reputation as a rogue and a fairy aficionado, he wanders ceaselessly with the cat, Mogram, as company. Then the king dares order him to eliminate a magical foe in northern waters, and threatens to attack fairylands if Cabernet refuses. As an increased annoyance, he is saddled with a stiff naval officer, the king's elderly personal advisor, and the advisor's nurse, a charming young woman named Rosemary who can inexplicably remember him. Cabernet wants to complete this mission quickly without actually facing the enemy, a dangerous enchantress who nearly killed him before. But sea perils and fearsome monsters blindside his every trick and turn. Moreover, he is somehow growing fiercely attached to the human tagalongs. As the enchantress's deadly net tightens around them, Cabernet must face the terrors of his past in order to save his newfound family and future. The Luck Child is part of the dark fantasy horror and folklore genres. This book is available on Amazon ebook, paperback, and hardcover and audible. The Luck Child came strongly recommended by a friend of mine, and I could not resist the tantalizing mystery that was posed by the book blurb. A fairy story with a curse, a mystery, and a romantic subplot? Sign me up. Rebecca Schaefer did a phenomenal job creating the character Cabernet. He is a real person dealing with real person problems dropped into a highly creative rendition of the fairy tale world. Schaefer definitely pulls inspiration from a traditional fairy story in the respect of fairy rules and such, but her serious balanced with humorous approach was fun to read. Action. The action never stops in this book. From the starting action to the big finale, this book will keep you turning and wondering and turning some more. There are mischievous fairies, deadly monsters, and colorful allies. I found myself wondering several times, how is Cabernet going to get himself out of this one? The mystery of the story was not as difficult to discover as some I have read, but the author fully made up for this with her stunning characterization. Adventure the world of The Luck Child is one that felt familiar in all the ways a fairy story should. A good mix of European influence and Irish folktale was thrown into a completely made-up space. You will adventure with the main character both in the present and the past, which adds both enjoyment and suspense. If you choose to read this book, there will be some exciting journeying in your future. Romance. The romantic subplot as the author puts it, was amazingly sweet. I had some serious heart swelling going on. I want to say all the things, but I don't do spoilers. You will just have to read the book. Religion. This book is deeply entrenched in the European Irish folk beliefs. There is no mention of belief past the themes of purpose and freedom. This does not bother me in the slightest, but if you are looking for a book with deeper spiritual meaning, it will not be found here. What will be found is a deeply human experience with loneliness placed in a fantastical setting. Final Thoughts This book was a joy to read. The main character was witty, intelligent, broken, and lonely. Though the author did not go far from what would be expected from the fairy tale genre, her wonderful portrayal of the characters found within this framework made the book something special. 
I will be reading this book again and again, officially adding it to my list of top 10 books. This book is rated G will make you gasp. Both eyebrows will be involved in reading this book. You can find the author, Rebecca Schaefer, at rebeccaschaefer.com. This episode of Clean Fiction Audio is sponsored by DM Designs. Find pre made AMP custom ebook covers at coversbydmdesigns.weebly.com. You can also find DM Designs on Instagram at coversbydmdesigns. For more information, email dmdesigns.salesedgemail.com. A Clean Fiction Review by Amy Lynn McConaughey of the Ice and Fate Duology by H.L. Burke. To save a kingdom, she must lose her heart. Born a princess in a land where the sun never sets, Aaron longs for the freedom to use her inborn magic. When an emissary from the dark side of the world requests an alliance sealed by marriage, Aaron jumps at a chance to escape the rules of her homeland, even if it means marrying a prince she's never met and never seeing the sun again. The starlit kingdom of Florheim believes that only a marriage of a Solian sun princess to their star prince will thwart the return of a feared sorcerer. Aaron meets the qualifications, but the journey is perilous. Even more dangerous to Aaron, however, is her growing attraction to the roguish Florian soldier, Kajik. In the throes of true love, Aaron rues her betrothal to the unknown prince. Can she follow her heart knowing that if she forsakes her vow, Florheim is doomed and herself along with it? The Ice and Fate duology is part of the Norse and Viking myth and legend fantasy romance and fantasy sword and sorcery genres. This book is available on Amazon as an ebook and paperback and on Audible. In my opinion, these books are the complete package. Before I began reading this book, I had read several series and standalone books by H.L. Burke. I enjoy the author's creative and mindful storytelling as well as her colorful world building. Many of her books would fall into the squeaky clean fiction category, but this one is slightly more spicy than what I had come to expect from her. I was not deterred, for I had come to trust her writing judgment, as it were. These books were so good that a second reading was a must. Action. These books do not skimp on the action. Though the first book starts a little slowly, the action picks up quickly enough. If you prefer your books with only a light sprinkling of intensity and fight sequences, these books are not your cupcake. With enough action and intrigue to fill a Marvel movie, these books will not disappoint the adrenaline buff in your life. Adventure I would argue that though these books are rooted firmly in the realm of fantasy fiction, though they could easily be lumped into the sci-fi genre as well, H.L. Burke constructs a lush and expansive planet in these books that you will traverse with eyes wide with wonder. Her creative interpretation of this world and its rules is as beautiful as it is complex. I enjoyed her descriptions of the planet and wildlife immensely. Romance there are copious amounts of flirty banter in the first book, with nothing much to worry about beyond some awkward situations and fluttery hearts. This grows into a relationship that will fog your glasses if you decide not to look away. There is some serious steam going on in the second book, but only within the bonds of marriage. This is as far as a clean fiction can go without being a DB. You must double blink to clear your eyes from being contaminated. You have been warned. Religion. I would say that one of the two religious systems of this book is loosely based on Christianity. I know the author to be a Christian, and this did not surprise me. Though she took some liberties with good spirits, so to speak, themes of reaching to God for love and protection are still to be found within the story. If you are looking for a faith journey, I would say that these books do not go that far. God is a good and supportive presence, but not overtly worshipped. Final thoughts. I found these books to be extremely enjoyable. The strong female lead paired with a sensitive male character was a lovely break from convention. With a beautiful world, several mysteries to be solved, and unexpected action around every corner, I believe these books are the full package. I did not guess the ending or any of the story's secrets on the first read-through. As a seasoned reader, I found this refreshing. I recommend you give these page-turners a read, preferably not when you intend to get any sleep. Elle may have stayed up until morning finishing these the first time. This book is rated a B, 
This is the full blush, people. If you are prone to fainting, you will need a fan. For more specific information about this rating visit, the Levels of Clean page on our website, you can find the author, H.L. Burke, at hlburkeauthor.com. A Clean Fiction Review by Amy Lynn McConaughey of the Steel City Genie series by Janine Apolto. So I accidentally killed a shifter. On purpose. With genie powers I shouldn't be able to use. Thanks to my curse mark. In my defense, the grizzly was threatening civilians and might have been a vomper as well. Pittsburgh is safer without him. Only the Fay court doesn't believe my story and the shifters are out for blood. Now I've lost my job as a romantic investigator and I'm on death row. My only hope is an oddly outgoing vegetarian vampire lawyer who seems strangely familiar. Too familiar. Almost like we've met before and this whole thing was a setup to take us both down. Wishing won't get us out of this mess, but my forbidden wish magic just might. The Steel City Genius Series is part of the Paranormal Urban Fantasy and Humorous Fantasy Genres. This book is available on Amazon and Audible. To be honest, I had never read an urban fantasy book until I was drawn by friendly obligation to read one of Ella Polito's books. It would be mild to say that I was pleasantly surprised. I laughed through the whole of the first book and giggled my way through the second. Not that there was not plenty of action and mystery involved, but her unique snarky voice could not be contained. The story itself is intense, but she balances all of that intensity with a light-hearted banter way of conversing that had me smiling. Action. The action can sometimes be a bit intense, but it should not trigger someone who is squeamish. If you are looking for a book with absolutely no mention of fighting baddies, this is not your cup of tea. There are definitely fight scenes, but the main character is conflicted when it comes to harming others. I give this character trait a thumbs up. In the language department, there is some mild usage, but what is used fits with the character of the heroine. Adventure. Though these books are set in modern day Pittsburgh, the world the author has built around this framework is expansive, to say the least. You will not leave the city, but the sense of adventure is there. There is a wide cast of unique characters that also add to the sense of wonder in her carefully crafted world. Romance. When it comes to romance, things get rather steamy in this book. What makes this not a DB double blink is how the author handles it. The moment that the scene is about to go too far, something ridiculous happens or someone walks in and makes a humorous comment. There are also other reasons that I find it to be less off-putting, but spoilers. Religion. The presence of God in these books is minimal. The main character is somewhat religious, but these are not books about faith. Again, this is in keeping with the character type the author is trying to portray. It is true that the series is not yet finished, and it is possible God could become a larger piece later on. Final thoughts. Overall, I found these books to be extremely enjoyable. The mystery kept me guessing, the action kept me turning pages, and the romance was sweet with a touch of spice. The best parts of these books were the tight world building and the snarky voice of the author. I highly recommend that you enjoy the world that Janine Apolito has created. This book is rated AB. This is the full blush, people. If you are prone to fainting, you will need a fan. Other books in this series include Wish You Were Here and Gone Wishing. You can find the author Janine Apolito at janineapolito.com.